Hi, guys. Welcome to episode 13 of season four of the Simple Doesn't Mean Easy podcast. I'm excited about today's episode. It's actually a bonus episode that I've just tacked on because I've been alluding to this since the summer. Started over on Instagram mentioning about this, and I feel bad it's taken me so long to get to it, but I'm excited that we're finally here today. Today, we're talking about the six things that really are not rocket science. They're really simple. Um, Nothing you have to buy. No program you have to buy. No special thing you have to do. But they're effective. Six things that helped me recently lose 20 pounds. And we're also talking about the three things that didn't help at all. So before we dive in, I want to announce our last winner of this season. Congratulations to Sunflower is her name over on Apple Podcast. You left a review on March 6th. That was the winning chosen review. So reach out to me, Sunflower, (laughs) and we will make sure that you get a book and full access to my brand new masterclass on making maple syrup. It is syrup season. The sap is flowing. It's a busy, exciting time here on the farm. So congratulations to Sunflower. I have this, if you're watching on YouTube, there's this weird shadow. I have no idea what it is, but I'm just going to ignore it. Um, Okay. So we're just going to dive in. The very first thing that I think it's really important to make clear is probably the thing that everybody thinks about when they want to lose weight is food. You have to get the food part right. Um, First of all, you want to enjoy it. If it's not something sustainable, if you are subscribing to some sort of a thing, (laughs) a program that you have to eat their boxed meals, I mean, maybe that will work for you. It would never work for me. And I know that right up front because I would hate it. And I wouldn't like then the, there's no flexibility. I wouldn't like being stuck with what they're telling me I have to have, et cetera, et cetera. So you want to enjoy your food. If you don't, it's going to be really hard to stick with your plan until you reach your goal weight. But in addition to that, Once you reach your goal weight, if you're not able to maintain the changes that you've made, then what's the point? Because eventually, either slowly or suddenly, you're going to put back on that weight. So do something that is very sustainable and that you can enjoy. Um, I added lots more veggies, especially over the summer when I had the big garden, it was doing well, and I had so much fresh food. That was a fantastic time to lose the bulk of the weight because I had access to all the amazing fresh vegetables that I could enjoy. So that was definitely a plus. I definitely added more protein as well. That helps a lot. Lots more water. Water, I mean, you guys know, water's It's the building block of our cells. We need lots of water. Um, And fermented foods. I added a lot of fermented foods. I mean, I shouldn't say I added them, but I increased the amount I was eating daily. I always have had a glass of kombucha since I started making it, which has that been eight years now, I think. Um, So it wasn't that I haven't always been having it, but I probably drank twice as much, honestly. And sourdough bread was my go-to. I, in fact, I pretty much, I don't think I ate any breads other than sourdough. And the fermentation of the bread is an added bonus when you're trying to lose weight. We talked last episode about fermented foods and drinks. Actually, we we're talking about drinks and how the fermentation process actually creates these short chain fatty acids in the food or the drink. And these short chain fatty acids control our appetite. And if we're 
including more of them because of our diet of fermented food and drinks, then our appetite is decreasing and our body is being told we're satisfied and we don't need to keep munching all the time. So that I think made a really big difference for me. I also fermented more vegetables from the garden than ever before. And I figured out how to ferment cherry tomatoes that um, they're delicious still. Right now it is March, mid-March when this recording comes out. Um, and these are tomatoes that I grew and harvested back in September. And they're still delicious. They don't have that crazy, you know, I, I thought I wouldn't like fermented foods before I actually started making them myself. I thought they would all taste like sauerkraut. And I do not like sauerkraut. But they're delicious. They're they're slightly salty. A little bit of a tang to them, but it's a delicious tang. And I use these cherry tomatoes and everything. I think I think I fermented three gallons of them. I think I had six half gallon jars full of cherry tomatoes. And I still have, I think about one and a half left. So um, I also, I ferment broccoli and cauliflower and dilly beans and peppers. I really like fermented peppers. I have a good bit of those left as well. So all of those things, adding anything fermented to your diet, it's going to help you suppress that appetite and help you just eat a little bit less. Something else that makes your food much more satisfying and makes you eat less because it's filling your cravings is good fats. They get such a bad rap. But if it is a good, healthy fat, you should be adding it to your diet. Um, for me, I started doing a lot more baking with lard. And for a lot of my recipes, I will replace the butter with lard or I'll do a half and half, half lard, half butter. I'll share a recipe for really delicious chocolate chip cookies made with lard in the show notes. And it's a really good, healthy fat. I will link in the show notes to an episode that I did as a guest on the Old Fashioned On Purpose podcast with Jill Winger. And that was the whole subject. We talked for over an hour about healthy fats and how amazing they are. I will also link articles that I've written on this topic that go into a lot more depth. But for now, I'll just leave it at that, that I added more lard into my cooking and my baking. I also added cod liver oil. I took a teaspoon a day. I'm still doing that every morning um, to get that healthy fat every day. So don't get me wrong, all this talk about what I added into my diet, I probably should have started with the fact that you absolutely need to cut calories if your goal is to lose weight. I mean, that's just a given, right? We all know that. We we like to think that there's these hyped up special diets that we can do that we don't have to cut our calories or they aren't going to be hard work for us in any way and we're just going to magically lose weight. Of course, we all want that. But in reality, even if that's what they're selling you, you know, when they talk about the program and how you can lose weight, trust me, it's just a sales pitch. It all comes down to the simple things. You need to cut calories and you need to increase your activity. We're going to talk more about that too. Um, so add more good food to your diet, but also think about how you can cut some calories. For me, I started eating a little later. I didn't have an early breakfast. I just waited a few hours and I got used to that pretty quickly. And it just led to me eating less. Now, the reason I got this idea actually was because of one thing I tried that failed. I decided, oh, I wish I knew. I think it was two years ago now that intermittent fasting was going to be my solution. I don't know if you've heard of intermittent fasting, <laughs> fasting, but I'll just explain it briefly. Basically, you are starving your body for an extended period of time. Sometimes they will even go two or three days with no food, just water. And, and there's a few things allowed, like you can have certain teas, but only certain teas without any sweetener or cream or anything and water. And I feel like there's something else I can't remember now, but you can go for days without eating or what they typically, when they're on a daily routine, is they go for so many hours 
and they sometimes extend that or shorten it for different reasons. But um, like, okay, so Bill did intermittent fasting. This is where I got the idea. I don't know where he heard it from a friend who did it successfully. And it worked amazingly for Bill in just a matter of months. So I thought, okay, I'll give this a try because I have these extra pounds. I just need to get off. Um, it failed horribly. And I think it's because partially it's more successful for men. I don't know the science behind it, but I know I've read that in many legitimate sources that it's just more effective, successful, and fast for men than women. And two, I was in the middle of menopause and the hormonal changes going on in my body combined with starving it for a certain number of hours every day. It just is not a good combination. It does not work effectively. It definitely did not work for me. I actually gained weight. Can you imagine how depressing that would be to pretty much be starving yourself and gaining weight? Crazy. And then you get used to it. You don't think of it as starving yourself because you get used to it. And what you're doing is you're you're training your body to ignore the hunger signals is what you're doing. And you're also training your body to store away excess fat because it gets worried. Wait, Michelle hasn't eaten for 18 hours. Um, I better start storing away some of those fat cells that she ate last because we might need it. We don't know when she's going to eat again, right? Um, so, yeah. Didn't work for me at all. Um, another problem for me was that when I, they call it your window opens. When your window opens, um, a lot of people that, that practice intermittent fasting, and this is what Bill did, eat whatever they want. And the goal is to just starve during those certain hours and then eat whatever you want in your open hours. So for Bill, like I think maybe six o'clock at night, he would start eating and he would make himself stop by 11 or something like that. And that's the only time he would eat during the day. But he would like load up with just, just eat nonstop in that time period. And unfortunately it was, you know, potato chips and packaged food and junk food and ice cream and just whatever he wanted. Now, of course, he did usually have a very good, nice, meaty meal. But aside from that, it's just junk. But it worked for him. He actually lost the weight. Now, here's the kicker. Was it sustainable for him? No. Because as soon as you decide to get back into any kind of a regular eating pattern, your body then is very confused. And he regained the weight very quickly. Now, I have talked to people who are intermittent fasters very successful they love it and it's just a lifetime thing for them but that is not a lifetime thing i would want like you want to be able to meet with your friends for lunch and enjoy it and not just take along a cup of water and refuse to eat or drink right i mean <laughs> and you want to sit down and have an early dinner with family if you have company over or something and not go oh no my window doesn't open for an hour and a half so you guys go ahead and eat. like <laughs> it just it it didn't work for me in any way, shape, or form. But on the flip side, good, wholesome food. It gives us energy. And even more important than that, I mean, we need energy, right? Like I remember I told you, there's two things. You need to cut your calories and you need to increase your activity. But if you're starving yourself and then when you are eating, you're giving yourself junk, then you don't have energy to increase your activity. So it's quite a conundrum. But if you're giving yourself, you're feeding your body good, wholesome food, not only do you have the energy to add the extra exercise to your day, but you also are, you're supporting a healthy metabolism at the cellular level, which is so important. Like you're going to the root of the matter and working out from there instead of the whole reverse, which doesn't work at all. So if you don't have a good metabolism, I think we all know you cannot lose weight. So I think that's another problem I was facing with intermittent fasting for me is I was screwing up my metabolism and all I was doing was making it slow down and I was gaining weight. So but on top of that, real food is just so much more enjoyable, if you ask me. So, um, okay. Is that all I wanted to tell you about? Um, 
Well, I did. I, I told you that I started eating a little later in the day. I also, throughout the whole period that I was losing weight, which I don't even remember, it was probably five or six months, I tried to have one wonderful large meal that had all the good stuff, the vegetables, the fruit, the meat, but I would interchange it depending on what I was doing and what I wanted to do with others that day. So sometimes that really large, wonderful meal would be for lunch if it was the weekend and I don't know, doing something with friends over at the middle of the day, but usually it was dinner. But the other meal, which everyone wasn't the large meal, was a giant salad. And that was true the entire time. And thankfully, I never got sick of salads. I would change up my toppings. I would add different fermented toppings. I would make sprouts to have different sprouts on my salad. And I would do different homemade dressings. So I'll share some of that, some of those tips in the show notes. I'm writing down my note to share salad tips. Um, and, oh, silly little things. I mean, everybody has their own thing, right? But little things that I found I loved snacking on helped a lot. Like I made them really good stuff and then I didn't limit myself to them. So frozen grapes was one thing. I always, when I buy grapes, seem to have some left over at the end that are not in prime condition and usually will wind up throwing away because they aren't that great. They're kind of mushy, whatever. I started freezing those. And when you're taking them right out of the freezer, they're delicious. So grapes that I would have thrown away became nonstop snack whenever I wanted a snack. And I would eat them right out of the freezer. They are hard and cold, but in the summertime, that's a great snack. And then um, things like fermented blueberries and dilly beans. So I was adding that fermented element, but it was also a really yummy snack that I enjoyed that I let myself have unlimited access to. Okay. The rest of these six points, I promise, are going to be a lot shorter. That was the longest, I feel like, most important thing to talk about when it comes to weight loss and what worked for me. But um, the next point is exercise. For me, it was paddle boarding. I live on a lake and I have a couple paddle boards. Sometimes I would go out with friends and it was a really nice break in my day of work because I work from home. And it also gave me vitamin D. I was doing this exercise outside. And it helped a lot with core, um, or what's the word I want to use? Strength. Strength is not a hard word. <laughs> because you're balancing on the paddleboard, you, without even thinking about it, you're working on your core. And the core is so important to your overall fitness. But I knew that wasn't enough because that was just working my shoulders and my core and I was getting my vitamin D. So what I added to that was some core Pilates exercises that I would do on the board. So the extra bonus for that for me was I had to stabilize the board as I'm doing these different Pilates exercises and it was an extra added oomph to the core exercises. So... That's what worked for me. But what I want to point out to you guys is what really matters is it has to be something you love because you need to do it often. For me, the goal I set for myself that worked was five days out of the week. Had to. Absolutely no way around it. No matter what the weather, no matter what my schedule, five days a week, I had to be out on that powder board. And it took me roughly 45 minutes. I had a certain spot that I would usually go to to do those Pilates exercises and then come back for the return trip. So usually 45 minutes would do it. If it was a gorgeous day and I wanted to spend some time relaxing in the sun after the exercises, then I might be out for an hour, hour, 15 minutes. So it was quite a commitment, you know, that I had to do this. And I chose to do it the middle of the day because I wanted to get the maximum sunlight. So, um, but it was hard because some days it's just impossible. You know, you have a long conference call that you just, you have to do. And then you have extra work that you just have to get done. Or stuff needed to be done in the garden that just could not be put aside. It had to be done that day. So I couldn't get out and exercise. So in that case, I had to do it on the weekends. And it was very often that one of the weekdays I couldn't do it. So I had to be out there on the weekend. And 
I, I'm proud to say that it, it's very few times that I missed it. I'm, there were a couple weeks that I just, I failed, didn't do the five times, but um, in general, I was able to do that, but it was hard. And this is something I loved. I looked forward to it every single day. Felt so good to be out there and on the board. I, I loved it, but it was still really hard. It's a big commitment. And, you know, we all have busy schedules and got to block out an hour. It's hard to do. So whatever the exercise is for you, make sure it's something you are fanatically in love with. <laughs> and if you can't think of any such thing, there's just no exercise that you would absolutely love doing. Then work really hard at thinking about some way to add an element of joy to it whether it's finding some new podcasts that you love, that you listen to while you're exercising, or audiobooks maybe, or a friend who you normally don't have the time to get together with that also wants to commit to this with you, that you are going to get to see that friend for an hour that time of day every day. Whatever it is that works for you, find a way to make this a really valuable, special time of your day that you really look forward to. And on those weeks that you do fail, that you only do it three or four times a week, um, do not have a defeatist mentality because attitude is so important. You need to be in this for the long haul. And even if you're not seeing results on the scale immediately, even if you're failing like every single week, you just don't quite make your goal, Stick with it. Do not allow that negativity to take over because trust me, it so quickly just deflates your excitement and gets you off the trail that you're on and you're back into that, the bad lifestyle choices. So a 4-8 attitude that we talked about last episode. No, it wasn't. Was it last or was it two episodes ago? Boy, I really should remember. I think it was two episodes ago. <laughs> I don't even know. Um, Philippians 4, 8, whatever is true and lovely and noble and right and pure and trustworthy and lovely, think on these things. That is the kind of attitude that you have to have. So when you screw up, then, you know, I didn't get to do that. Instead of focusing on the exercising you didn't do and how you screwed up, focus on the parts, the good side, the good side that, but you know what? Yesterday I did a really good job and tomorrow I know I'm going to do it, so it's okay. Or, but you know what? I'm thankful that I have the health and the strength that I do, that even though I didn't exercise today, I could have, and that is something to be thankful for. You know, just whenever you have those negative thoughts, immediately grab hold of them and turn them around to make them positive thoughts, because otherwise, very quickly, you're just not going to be able to meet your goal. And that's a very sad thought. So you can... Do this. Always, always remember that. I'm going to pause for a quick second to tell you the number one thing that I did to lose weight last summer was eating all fresh food whenever possible. If you have the option of growing your own food, I can't recommend it enough. And I cannot recommend enough. My favorite seed company who is sponsoring this episode, True Leaf Market, is amazing. Their variety is phenomenal. Their prices are fantastic. Their seed germination rate is through the roof, which is really important to me. They are high quality seeds and their shipping time is so fast. So check them out. Go to soldyrested.com slash coupons for the current special $10 off a $50 order for more details and for the link to their site. I love True Leaf Markets. Okay, number three out of six, we have to reduce our stress. And I think a lot of times this is counterintuitive to the whole thing because I think worrying about your food, counting your calories, um, adding lots more exercise routines and doing difficult exercises, all those things add stress instead of reducing it, right? So I wanted to make sure I told you why it's important to reduce stress so that you can understand this. Because for me, that really helps me internalize an idea. If I understand 
what's going on behind it. So why does it matter? Why is it important to reduce stress if you want to lose weight? Cortisol actually increases in our body every time that we are stressed. And cortisol signals our body to actually change the way our metabolism is working and to store up fat. Um, innately, our bodies assume if we are under stress that we might need food later to deal with this stress, not food, fat. We might need fat reserves to handle this stress. So it's just a natural mechanism of our body that the cortisol levels go up when our stress goes up. Now, if you're like me in a middle life, middle age woman dealing with menopause, you have the added problem that our cortisol is rising naturally. It's part of menopause. Our estrogen levels are decreasing and our cortisol is increasing. So you add stress to menopause and then you're really in a bad predicament, <laughs> which is where I was for years. I was not able to lose a single pound. And I think a lot of it comes down to the cortisol, very honestly. And I was doing all the wrong things to just increase my stress. We're going to get into a few more things in a second. But um, so there, I told you I was going to share three things that didn't work. One was the intermittent fasting, and another one comes in related to all of this. I added so much stress to my life with the incorrect efforts I was making to try and lose weight, like the intermittent fasting, like exercising that I hated, but I was making myself do it years ago. And it was ineffective, and I didn't stick with it. And then I got even more stressed and upset about it. So I didn't realize then how important it was to choose daily exercise that I actually loved that reduced my stress. And part of that is exercise outside if you're able to. We're going to get to why that is in a second, too. Um, let's see. Oh, another way to lower cortisol is actually to do walking. Studies, numerous studies have shown that walking, not jogging, not running, not sprinting, walking for half an hour a day shows significant reduction in cortisol levels just five days a week. Not, you don't even have to do it every single day. And if you're not able to do 30 minutes a day, just do 10. Whatever you can do is going to help. And I think a good reason that that is, is because walking is outside and being outside in nature does a lot to reduce our stress levels and reduce the cortisol. So um, I'll leave a link in the show notes to an interesting study I was reading recently about how regular exercise literally makes our body resilient to stress. So it's an amazing combination. If you're choosing the right exercise, right, not one that's going to stress you out <laughs> like I was doing, you're choosing the right exercise. Ideally, it's outside. It's something you love. It's actually going to help you fight off stress which is going to, you know, keep those cortisol levels from rising and overall just help you lose weight. It's also going to help you do something that leads to our next point. It's going to help you sleep better. Studies, of course, show that, that regular exercise improves our sleep. And this is the third area that I messed up. And I'm still working on this area, honestly. I am really bad about getting enough sleep. And years ago, when I was doing all the wrong things to try and lose weight, I, because I was trying to add in the things needed to my day to lose the weight, the exercising that I hated, um, special meal prep that took too long that I really didn't enjoy that either, I wound up having to get less sleep because I needed to block out the time to do all these things. But I also had the three jobs that I love that I was working. So I had to have time for those. And I'm doing them over the weekend too. And it just, it cuts into sleep time. It's just the way it works. Like if you're going to do all those things, then you're going to sleep less. So that was a huge mistake for me. And sometimes I was losing sleep for very good reasons that you would think 
would even help my nutrition, would help my health. Like I was losing sleep because I needed to go on a great hike the next day with a friend, but I had to get the work done tonight. So I'd stay up till 3 a.m. to get the work done. And then I'd wake up at 7 a.m. to go hiking. And it's like, that's not a good thing to do. <laughs> so I'm actually going to stop talking about sleep there because we need to do a whole episode about that, I think. By the way, I haven't even told you. I'm, for, I'm on the fourth of six points. I haven't even told you that. I'm excited that in two different votings that have gone on over on Instagram, you guys have chosen the next season episode to be about weight loss, nutrition, and exercise. I think it's going to be a really fun season. I've already started planning it. I thought I started started thinking about some guests that are going to be great guests to have on. And I think we need to do a whole episode just on sleep, mainly because I need it. Because <laughs> this is the area of these six that I'm talking about today. That's the hardest for me. Like I said, I love my jobs. I, I love working and I, I love reading. I love nighttime and I love morning. Like I'm an early morning person, but I also love the wee hours of the dark night when the house is still and I can read or focus on whatever I'm doing. So I tend to just not get anywhere near enough sleep. So this is something I need to really work on and I like to talk more about it. But everything we're talking about today, I think there's so much we could go into deeper than I'm talking about. And there's so many other topics related to weight loss, nutrition, and exercise that we're going to get into next season. So I'm excited about that. All right. The fifth thing that I did, I already alluded to this some, I really focused on my core muscles. And it's so important because, I mean, these support our spine. They're connected to our hip. I was having lots of low back problems from car accidents from a decade ago, and it was really bothering me the most recent years. But, excuse me, all of that is connected. The low back is connected to the hip, and that's connected directly to, you know, our core muscles. And if we can strengthen our core muscles, everything else is going to improve. And it's going to improve our posture. It's going to improve so many things. So for me, not only the the paddleboarding, but the Pilates was so important for that. I actually looked up the seven, no, is it seven? Six. The six principles behind Pilates, in case you don't know what it is, and I thought I would just run through these quickly. Um, let's see, control. You're controlling your muscles, your movements, and allows you to get better exercise and benefits for your body to move better because of the control that you're using. Pilates is all about very slow, controlled, regimented movements, holding a move, and releasing it slowly, thinking about the release as much as you think about the beginning of the move, and it all comes back to controlling the muscle. Breath, breathing is very important. You wanna make sure you're creating enough oxygen-rich blood to help the body function during each movement. So you take deep, full breaths, you're breathing through the nose when you inhale and out through the mouth when you exhale. Um, the third point with Pilates is concentrating. You keep your mind on every movement. Like you really think about that part of the body, that muscle that you are using in that moment. And that ensures that you're performing it with the proper form so you have less energy. Um, fourth is flow. You want to flow from one movement to the next, and that builds your workout and challenges your body. And fifth is centering. It's a core strengthening conditioning program. By ensuring your core is strong, you protect the spine and it gives you more power to do each movement. And finally, the sixth point of Pilates is precision. By being precise, you can prevent injury and precision also leads to repetition and certain movements become second nature and allows you to focus on balancing through the form. So it really does help a lot with balance. And finally, that brings us to my last point. The sixth thing that helped me lose the weight was having a hobby that I loved. I've always loved gardening, and I've done it every year since we've lived on our current small farm. But last year, I gave it even more attention. I allowed myself to spend the hours down there with no guilt, with no stress over, I don't have the time to be doing this. Because 
I was really thankful for all the food I was growing. I grew more food last year than I have any year before in my life. Like I told you, I wound up fermenting a lot, but I also dehydrated a lot of it and grew so many more herbs than I've ever grown before. And I'm enjoying all the benefits of that all winter long this year. And it just was so, so great last summer to just spend the time down there in my favorite place to be doing my favorite hobby. So whatever that hobby is for you, reading, walking, hiking, shopping, <laughs> whatever the hobby is for you. Um, studies have shown, in fact, I'll link a study in the show notes that shows that doing a hobby that you love decreases your cortisol levels. We're going back to the cortisol, guys, it, because it's relieving your stress, right? If you're totally relaxed, you know, you know those hobbies that make you lose all track of time. That's the hobby I'm talking about. Do more of that. It is so good for your overall health in so many ways. But I promise you, it is one step towards losing weight and being healthier. Um, actually, the study I'm going to link, I just looked at my notes. It says that gardening decreased cortisol levels more than occupational therapy did for the patients in this study. How cool is that? Choose well and enjoy it. And when it gets hard, when you're not seeing results, when you keep failing and you're missing up, messing up, messing up with what you had planned on doing for your exercise or your eating, um, encourage yourself to keep at it, to get back on track, and to realize that if you don't take time now for your wellness, you are going to be forced to take time dealing with an illness. It's just the way our bodies work. If we are not taking care of them, we are going to face problems. And either way, you're spending time, right? It's so much better to invest the time in the wellness than to have to spend the time dealing with an illness. Um, and also... Keep in mind that life doesn't get better by chance, but it gets better by change. And you can change your eating habits. You can change your exercise habits. You can change your hobby habits. And you can truly make a difference in your own health and wellness. So thanks for listening, guys. I would love to hear from you about your favorite tips on any of these topics, your favorite exercises, your favorite exercise programs, your favorite um, fermented foods that really help you, you know, have a healthier diet and potentially lose weight, any of that stuff. I would love to hear from you. Reach out to me over on Instagram or on Facebook or through email. If you're not on my email list, please hop on because that is a way that I love to stay connected with everyone and keep you guys informed of cool things going on. Like that cool True Leaf coupon code. Don't miss out on that True Leaf offer. I will put that in the show notes. And remember, it's easy to forget how blessed we are to live this life. So enjoy the simple everyday efforts. I know it's not easy, but it's a very good life.